God wants you to know his will. And I want you to know that I haven't just read this, but I've experienced this. Now, for those of you who are new at Sandals, I want you to know that I'm not like this crazy guy that's like, oh my gosh, God appears to me every day. That, that's not true. Those of you who have been at Sandals know that that's how I am. But if you're new, I want you to know the story that I'm about to share with you is not something that I share on a regular basis. But it happened. God actually spoke to me. A couple of years ago, I was doing a wedding. I was in Redlands. I wasn't doing a wedding. We were doing a wedding rehearsal. I was at the wedding rehearsal and the phone rang and it was my friend, a fellow member of our church. And I couldn't understand what he was saying on the phone. He wasn't making sense. Obviously he was upset, something had happened. And then all of a sudden I realized why he was upset because these words came across the phone. My son has killed himself. Would you please come to my house? I said, absolutely. I'm in Redlands, you're in Riverside. There are other pastors at Sandals that are closer. I will have them there immediately and I'll be on my way. And so I left the wedding rehearsal, told them I had to go, finished everything up, I'm on my way, I'm on the 91 freeway, and I'm like, oh my gosh. It was was a tragic situation, it was a messy situation, it involved a gun in in their home. It was just one of those situations you don't wanna go to. And as I'm heading there, the police are leaving. Coroner's leaving. They're taking my son's, my friend's son's body away. There's a mother brokenhearted, a father brokenhearted, and brothers and siblings just devastated. And I hang out with his family and we hang out there, you know, all, I mean, for hours and hours until everyone's gone away and it's just a few of us together. And my friend says, Matt, would you do my son's funeral? I said, absolutely, absolutely, I'd be honored to. And then he put his head down and with tears in his face, he said, is my son in hell? Let me tell you something, death is hard enough to deal with. You know what's even harder to deal with is where are your loved ones? after they're gone. And I'm gonna tell you the same thing I told him. I said, you know what? I said, there's no unforgivable sin other than the rejection of Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. That is the only sin that will send you to hell. Your son is not in hell because he killed himself. Now, I I said this right then, and I'm gonna say it to you. Suicide is a sin. Don't do it. Don't do it. You may think it solves your problems, but you know what it does? It creates lifelong problems for all the people that love you and will miss you, and their lives will never be the same without you. Don't do it. Don't do it. He said, would you preach the funeral? I said, absolutely. But I was struggling in my own soul. I know the theological truth that the only thing that can keep us from going to heaven is the rejection of Jesus Christ. But you know what I found out in this suicide is I didn't know my friend's son like I thought I knew him. He was supposed to get married. Life, life was, was turning up, things were going on. I didn't know the depths of his struggles, the depths of his pain, the depths of his sorrow. And so I began to question and I began to wrestle, is Stephen in heaven? Because I know the theological truth, but the reality is, we don't know definitively who's in heaven and who's not. We have feelings, you know, yeah, that guy's in heaven. No, nope, that guy's in hell. You know, you won't ever say that. You won't ever say that. You know, he was a good person. <laughs> right. Um, and so I went home and I was just tore up inside. I was just tore up inside and I couldn't go to sleep. And so finally I, I fell asleep and this really happened. This happened. In the middle of the night, I was awoken by an angel. I'm telling you. And you're like, oh, how sweet. No, 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 no. I'm not talking a chubby baby with a halo eating donuts, okay? I am talking, there, there's two times in my life that I have been this frightened. One time when I was in the ocean and a shark was circling me, okay? That's one time. And now you're like, well, I saw on the, on the news that you can beat those things with your fist. Okay, listen, buddy. That's the news. I'm here to tell you that on that day, I heard from my inner, my inner soul voice, and my inner soul voice is a six-year-old girl. And she said, we're going to die. We're going to die. It's over. (laughs) Same inner girl voice when the angel of the Lord appeared to me. Literally, she said, we're dead. We're dead. We're going to die. And I was terrified, terrified. And I'm sitting up in my bed. My wife is sleeping through this whole thing because she doesn't love Jesus the way that I do. (laughs) She's dreaming. And I'm like, literally like, wake, wake up. And this thing is floating in our bedroom. It has form but no form, and it had a weapon in its hand. I don't know if it was a sword, a spear. I don't know what it was. It was 
powerfully scary. And guess what the angel's first words were to me were? Do not be afraid. I was like, oh, like yeah, that's good advice because I am afraid. He could have said, and don't poop yourself because your wife is right next to you. That would have been good info. I was terrified. I didn't poop myself, but I felt like it. It was close. It was close. And this is what the angel said. Stephen is with us. He's in heaven. And I was like, oh. And then he said, go back to sleep. And I was like, okay. Wake up, wake up, wake up, Jamie, wake up, wake up. So the next day I'm trying to process this. I'm trying to process this. The angel is as real in my mind right now as it was that evening. I can still see it clearly. I don't it, him. I can still see him clearly. It was powerful. I will never forget it until the day that I die. But then here's my question. Why, why, why would God reveal that to me and not the parents? And so I wrestled with that all day long and I didn't tell the parents. So the next night I went to sleep, a little scared. <laughs> but I went to sleep and I had a dream. And in my dream... The angel was not a dream. The angel happened. But in my dream the next night, the Lord spoke to me. And the Lord said, I was in this conversation with God. I said, God, why did you reveal this to me and not, and not Stephen's parents? And this is what God said. Because they wouldn't believe even a vision. They wouldn't believe the angel I sent. He said, but they will believe you. They trust you and they love you. And so I told you. And he said, tell them my message. Any angel fans in here? Angel fans? Okay. Yeah. Woo -hoo -hoo. Well, listen. You don't root for the angels. You know what the word angel means in the Greek? It means messenger. You're not an angel fan. You're a messenger fan. That's what angels are. Angelos in the Greek is where we get the English word angel means messenger. And God told me, deliver the message from the messenger. And I'll never forget the day I shared with my friends, your son is in heaven, and I don't believe this. I know this because God has revealed his will to me. And they were so comforted by that, and I preached the funeral, and all kinds of people were saved, and lives were changed. I want you to know that God is not distant or unknowable. He still speaks. He still speaks. And if you don't know me, I know you're going to wrestle with whether to believe what I've just shared, but I'm here to tell you that experience was more true and more real than any experience I've had in my life, and I will carry it with me the rest of my life. Don't disbelieve God just because you don't feel him, just because you haven't seen him, just because you haven't heard from him. 